the work I'm involved in in the UK and around the world is mainly about trying to design educational programs which mobilize creativity to give young people a sense of agency over the world around them. So for example, in digital technologies, it's about teaching kids not just to use Excel or PowerPoint or Word, but how to be digital makers, how to create programs, websites, apps, robots, and to be ready to be you know, at the forefront of shaping the digital world around them. In schooling, it's the studio schools model where we've re almost flipped on its head the school curriculum. So instead of having creativity as something added on as an extra class or out of school activities, the core curriculum now is done through real life problem solving projects, often working with uh, businesses and NGOs outside the school, so that creativity is really just part of how everyday schooling is done. How do we widen access to the skills to creatively shape the world around us. We've developed skills for development, a DIY toolkit which has now had I think nearly a million downloads around the world for helping NGOs, community activists to use innovation methods to solve the problems around them and also training political leaders of the next generation to be creative problem solvers uh, is, is another strand of this. So I think we're moving a long way from the debates perhaps of a few years ago which were just about creativity as a good in itself, something which could be added in to school curriculums, to thinking much more how do we prepare citizens of this century to have a sense of agency that they can shape the world around them and be responsible for it. The starting point may be mindsets and language and words and ideas, but very quickly you have to move to practical methods. And some of those methods are better than others, and so we also need much more evidence about which methods work well. And for me, the other step change which is needed in the whole field of creativity and innovation is much more attention to evidence and being much more self-critical. A lot of things which sound plausible don't actually work very well in practice. We need a movement which is committed to being skeptical of itself, rigorous in testing different models, and not assuming that just because something sounds very good, can be shown a beautiful video, has a very eloquent advocate, those aren't necessarily the things which will end up working well. And we need a learning culture for learning itself, and part of a learning culture is skepticism. And I feel there's not enough of that at the moment. There's still too much sort of snake oil gets spread around in education globally, which ultimately lets down the kids. Education has become truly multipolar. There was a time, I remember, when it was assumed the new ideas in education would come from you know, the US or Germany and then would spread across the world. Now, as in so many other fields, the best innovation is happening all over the place. When we were designing studio schools, which started in the UK, we took elements from Australia, from Paraguay, from India, from Brazil, and brought them together into a way which would work for the UK. And increasingly, that's the way we need to think. We need to be hungry to learn from the best examples anywhere, and we need to be slightly shameless in borrowing plagiarizing the best things and putting them together into forms which work in our own country. And that spirit of truly global learning about learning, I think is, is spreading, but there clearly is a huge gulf between the quality and scale of what needs to be done uh, and, and the extent of need.